This is the 20th lecture in the FOA series on fiber optics. In this lecture, we'll cover some of the lesser known tests in fiber optics like reflectance and spectral attenuation. Most of the tests we'll cover here are used for specialized long distance outside plant testing. In other words, will a very, very long link tens or hundreds of kilometers support speeds of transmission in the gigabits to hundreds of gigabits. The first test we'll talk about is reflectance testing. Reflectance is basically a connection test between two fibers, usually a connector, although occasionally a splice. It's sometimes also called optical return loss. But optical return loss also occasionally refers to a test of an installed cable plant that includes the backscatter from all the fiber. The easiest way to test reflectance is with a meter and source or an optical continuous wave reflectometer to actually measure the light reflected from a given connector under test. You can also test it with an OTDR if you have an installed cable plant and it will not only give you a measure of reflectance but will also tell you where the reflectance is in the cable plant. Reflectance occurs at a junction between two fibers, usually a connector, although it can be a badly made fusion splice or mechanical splice, where a small amount of the light is reflected back toward the source. Reflectance can affect laser sources and cause multi-path interference problems basically building up noise in the link. So it's important to know if you have overly reflective joints, especially in high bitrate laser systems. One way of testing reflectance, generally used for patch cord testing, is using a laser source, a meter, and a coupler. You use a high-powered source to send a signal down through the coupler to the test point where you mate the connector you want to test and the reflected signal coming back up is split into a meter which measures it. The coupler needs calibration for the split ratio and it needs to have both a high powered source and a very sensitive meter because reflectance can be as little as 60 dB down from the signal. That's a part per million. This particular test is used for testing patch cords or connectors, but it still has a fairly large uncertainty, in part because it's difficult to terminate the far end of the cable to get no reflections that will bother the measurement. On an install cable plant, we generally test reflectance with an OTDR. The OTDR is calibrated to look at the reflectance peak and measure the total amount of reflectance on top of the backscatter level. This is the most valid way to find reflectance in an installed cable plant because it also tells you where the problem is in case it requires attention. Bandwidth and dispersion are different for single mode and multi-mode fiber. For single mode fiber, we're interested in chromatic dispersion and polarization mode dispersion, particularly on long lengths after they're installed in the field. For multi-mode fiber, we're interested in modal dispersion and chromatic dispersion, but we only test it in the factory, not in the field. Chromatic dispersion can be very important in long single-mode links. The problem is the speed of light varies with wavelength, so the redder light travels faster and gets to the receiver first, causing pulse dispersion. Color differences, like the broad spectrum of an LED, suffer more dispersion, and lasers less so. But in a long single-mode length, chromatic dispersion can be a very important parameter to measure to ensure that single-mode fiber can carry very, very high bitrate signals. Also on long single-mode lengths, we worry about polarization mode dispersion. PMD is caused by the fact that the speed of light varies with polarization. And the polarization depends on the fiber ovality, the wavelengths, 
and stress on the fiber. And the latter is a particularly troublesome problem with making measurements in the field because the polarization can vary with temperature or even wind stress on aerial cables. It's really a small effect, but it can be very important on long lengths at 40 to 100 gigabits per second. Wavelength division multiplexing uses multiple wavelengths of light to transmit signals simultaneously. The one thing that we need to ensure is that the fiber has low attenuation and in fact similar attenuation at most of the wavelengths that we're actually using for transmission. For that reason we test spectral attenuation of the fiber. Wavelength division multiplexing systems can use the entire spectrum from 1260 to 1675 nanometers and that includes the area in fiber where you normally have the water peaks. So particularly when you use CWDM you need low water peak fiber and spectral attenuation tests will, will confirm that the fiber will support DWDM or CWDM over the wavelength range of interest. You'll notice that for these tests we talked about what we test but not necessarily how we do it. And the reason is that all of them typically have multiple test methods available and specialized equipment available to do it. Some of them have multiple ways of doing the testing. Much too complicated for a short YouTube lecture. So we suggest that you go to the FOA website in the online reference guide on long distance testing and we'll give you much more information on how these particular tests are done. And don't forget all the other lectures that we have on YouTube as well as some of the hands-on processes that we document with videos. And for everything you need to know, start at the FOA Online Reference Guide to Fiber Optics. There's a tremendous amount of information there. We're the FOA, the Fiber Optic Association, the Worldwide Professional Society of Fiber Optics. Please refer to our website for more information on the organization as well as technical information on most topics in fiber optics.